Yo, 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 what's up guys? Three Misfits back at you. Today we're gonna be doing the Arashi 2.0 rear scent install video on our beautiful 2007 Yamaha R6 we have. This beautiful chameleon cha color changing paint. Um, so first things first, just either take a picture or take a mental image of how everything's laid out here because you're gonna be basically replacing everything one step at a time. So we're gonna be replacing the actual foot peg first and then we'll move on to the shift linkage and the actual shifter itself. Um, if you want, some people I know will take the kickstand off and you can powder coat it or paint it however you like, but that's something totally different and we can show you how to take that off in another video. But let's get right into it. So first things first, we're gonna be taking off the rear peg here. <laughs> So now that we have the rear, the peg off, just make sure that the new Arashi 2.0 somewhat resembles it. So you want to make sure the line, the holes line up and everything like that. Because the last thing you want to do is you want to you don't want to cut this tag off and realize it's not for the bike or something happens. Because if you do cut it off, it does say that you cannot return it after. So we've checked it. We know it fits. So we're gonna be removing it. Boom! Cannot return it now. So that's that. So we'll be installing the rear pegs like that, like so. Um, definitely lock tight, thread lock, what do you want to call it? The bolts that you'd be putting back in here because these will rat out from the vibrations of the motorcycle itself. Found out the hard way. So we'll be doing that now. I'm gonna be putting the actual peg itself on. So what I'm gonna do is my lock tight loop bolt just to make sure it stays on there. And for this back bolt, you will be needing a 12 millimeter wrench. So let's have that. So there you go. That's half of the first rear set installed. It's not that hard again. Just make sure you're matching everything up. Um, what I would suggest is once you have it on, just figure out where you would like it, which we're going to have the rider sit on and after. Make sure he's comfortable where the rear sets are, and then we will be taking out these four bolts and making sure we lock them and put them back together. Next, we're gonna be taking off the shift linkage here, which you're gonna need a 10 mil, 10 millimeter wrench, take that off, and then you're also gonna need uh, another tech, uh, hex or torx bolt, sorry, socket, and then we'll take that off. So it's gonna crack that loose, and then I'm gonna be taking off this 10 millimeter bolt up here, which connects it to the actual engine itself, so it'll know what gear is in up here. Um, what I would suggest, and it's already done here, is it's been marked lined, so if you ever wanna put it, take it off, make sure it's on that line or on that little dot that someone's made. Um, that way, it knows exactly where to be. So right now, I'm just taking off this little bolt that we have here. Um, I will be installing it on this, the shifter itself. Um, it comes with a little notch here, so you can adjust it a tiny bit wherever you would like it to be. If you got a bigger foot, you're gonna be more to the left. If you got a smaller foot, it's gonna be more to the right. It is a small adjustment. I don't think it really matters too much, but I'll set something to know with just a heads up. That's how you'll be installing it. So, Something to note here with the shift linkage, um, there's two ways of doing it. You can either take off the top part of the joint, which you just loosen this nut and it should unscrew here. Or if you pull this boot back, you can unscrew the screw and put it into your, your new joint that you have here. Just something to think about, different ways of doing it. Um, I believe last time I did on my bike, I actually took off the whole joint itself so I didn't have to unscrew it or take the boot off. But the more to you, however you want to do it, they both work. All right, so I've switched some of the parts over. I've located where and how I'm gonna be putting these. So I've adjusted it to the rider's length. Um, again, if you want it to MotoGP style, you're gonna have to flip this little lever over, um, depending on you know what you wanna do. If you do want a regular style, regular stock is like that. Um, but the rider would like MotoGP style, so we're gonna flip it over for him. And then when you're installing it here, this little notch does have a lot of teeth on it. Just make sure you're not damaging those teeth because that is actually what grabs it and actually what shifts your motorcycle right there. 
Um, so just be very delicate and very careful with how you put it on, make sure it fits snugly. And then also make sure you torque down this bolt that was on this piece right here, right? Make sure you don't strip it because again, that is literally what's shifting your motorcycle. All right, so now I'm gonna be locked hanging the main bolt that's gonna be holding the shifter into the bike. So let's do that. Oh, sorry about the floor. Okay, and once you got a few threads started, we're gonna wanna put this nicely. So now those few threads are in. Now we can put on this little joint right here. And again, make sure it you line up the lines that you've already made on it and make sure you put it on nicely and you don't strip anything. So that didn't line up, so let's take it off again. Adjust it. There you go. Now our line matches up with the little gap here. So we're gonna put in just a little bit, leave a little bit sticking out, but you don't wanna put in too far. And then again, I'm gonna be lock hiding this bolt here just so it doesn't rumble out. Bad boy in. And this is a 10 millimeter, so let's take that. And make sure you don't strip this bolt because just a hassle you don't need. So that's in. Now we can tighten the bottom bolt up fully. Again, I would suggest not using power tools, use hand tools, just so you don't strip anything. So that's on there now. What I would suggest as well is to lock tight these two adjustment nuts just so they don't come loose when you're riding. Um, definitely just make sure, we did make sure the rider fits on you nicely, so it's all good. We locked it all six of these bolts here, so those are all good. It's not gonna go anywhere. Even the foot pegs themselves are locked tight. So all in all, this is the shifter side all done. As you can see, it actually presents pretty nicely on the black swing arms and black subframe and stuff here. Um, Again, if you do want to powder coat your kickstand, you can. That's something you can do after. Um, all in all, more aggressive. Just note that there is no guard on the bottom here no more. So if you have loose clothing or loose shoes or something, laces, just make note that it could catch on the chain. But again, if you're wearing riding boots, that's not going to be an issue. So yeah, that's for the shifter side all done. All right, so now we're gonna be working on the brake side. So this side, I believe is a little bit harder just cause you got so much going on. You got brake lines going, you got the brake hydraulic cylinder coming here and a lot of springs and stuff on the back. Um, you will be eliminating one of the springs just because the new rear sets do come with this mechanism right here. So once you pull it down, it returns it. So you don't need that spring again, but we will be taking it off. You're gonna be having to take off these two main bolts, but before you take those off, I would suggest loosening up these two bolts, which hold the actual cylinder itself, just so you don't have to hold it and mess around with it and all that. So we'll be taking these two off first, and then we'll take these off. And I'll be back with you. All right, so now that we took those four screws out, um, I, what I like to do is actually inspect it. Um, if you can't remember it, take a picture, which I probably will be taking a picture of this. Um, like I said here before, there is two springs here with the hydraulic cylinder. Um, there's also the brake light switch. It's a, a banjo switch, so just be careful that you don't pull it out or anything like that, don't damage it. Um, there are some wires connected here. I will be seeing if we can connect them somehow to the new rear sets, but I don't think there's a, a flange or anything that's connected to the old rear set. So we'll see where we can tuck those in and whatnot and customize them somehow. So we'll be here back. We'll be back here in a sec. So after taking off some of the screws in the back here for the cylinder, I was trying to take off the cylinder itself. It turns out you can actually remove this little guard that they have here. So you're gonna take your Allen wrench, Allen keys, or bits or whatever you have, and you gotta take these two screws out. Um, just a little headache, but 
there's no other way to take that out. So again, be careful. You do got brake lines running here. So we'll do that now. So we'll be connecting the brake light through this little mechanism that they have here that comes on, I believe all of them, even my CBR has the same little O circle attachment here. Um, you will be connecting it with a spring through this metal piece here. So once you do compress or decompress the lever, it'll pull the spring on the banjo bolt and it'll just ignite the backlight. Um, so yeah, we'll be getting to that shortly here. Um, just making sure everything lines up properly. And again, if you do loosen the extension on, make sure you lock tight it in properly. The last thing you want is to lose your back brakes. It'll be a little scary. But yeah, so we'll come back to you here when we got more work done to it. switch um this is a big pain in your ass i'm not even gonna lie even on my bike I, it was just a pain um but what we found out is that it was a little too small for the actual brake light banjo switch i guess so we took some needle nose pliers and we extended it so we kind of extended it outwards and then after you can close it just so it clamps around it um we did take the time to then install it on the little lever right here which actually if you so if you're holding it like this and you press down the brake, that's what triggers the banjo bolt in here, which then ignites your um, brake light. And just to confirm it, we did turn the bike on. Um, we did test it out. The brake light did ignite. It's on a good position. So, you know, if you're resting your foot, it won't ignite. But when you press down, the brake light will illuminate. So now we're just going to go through, make sure everything's tight. Uh, we're tightening these bolts again. Um, we did lock tight everything. So that's a good, uh, and yeah, so now we're just gonna install this, the actual bracket bolts now, and we should be good to go. finished product here you got that Rashi 2.0 rear sets installed the brakes a lot tighter a lot more responsive which is good um, you can still rest your foot on it without engaging the brake but once you give it the little bit of motion that it needs it'll kick the back brake right on um, Loctite everything Loctite these two bolts um, we did forget to lock them but we took them back out locked it and stuck them back in what I would suggest is leaving the bike overnight let the Loctite dry up seal properly um, this bolt is still loose just because we're waiting for the new titanium acroprovic exhaust coming in. So that's a little hanger for it. So that's not going to be an issue. It should fit right up with any exhaust because this mount is based off the stock uh, rear set mount. So that's no problem. Um, the adjustment here is tight. It'll be perfect for your brake lever here. So no problem with that. We also tightened up the, the guard here, which again adds a more aggressive style, which is nice. Uh, cylinder mounts tightened up all in all is good the one problem we did have was with the brake light banjo bolt um, or the even the mount rather but we figured that out the little customization with some needle nose pliers that's all good no biggie there um, works runs fine uh, again depending on how you want to go you can either go regular shifting or you go motor GP shifting I would recommend more GP shifting just because it's more aggressive you have better shifts um, it will take a little bit of time to get used to, but that's a whole other video. Um, but yeah, all in all, I run uh, Arashi on my bike, and I 100% go by them. No issues whatsoever. Just make sure you lock hit everything, you double check everything, because the rear sets are a very important part of your bike. That's how you brake, how you change gears. You do not want anything messing up. Um, yeah, so that's all. We will be making more videos. Um, 
probably more Arashi videos even. We got a couple more bikes that are probably gonna put Arashis on. Um, so Arashi, if you wanna hit us up, you know, if we can do a little something, something. No biggie, but yeah. That's about it, guys. That's all for today. This is Three Misfits. We signing out here tonight.